If you want to learn how to configure your record settings on your audio recorder or USB interface, in this video I'm going to tell you all you need to know about sample rate, bit depth and file types. Hey I'm Ben and in this series I'm going to take a look at what you can do to improve the quality of your sound recordings. I've got more techniques and reviews coming over the next few weeks, so please hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss out. So we're going to go through the settings on Tascam DR40X, but the choices are just as relevant on all types of recorders and audio interfaces. If you're just looking for some quick set and forget settings, you can't go far wrong with WAV files at 24 bit and a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. But if you want to know what those options mean so that you can make an informed decision of what's best for you in your recording situation, then stick around for a few more minutes. Okay, so to access the settings on the DR40X, hit the menu button and press enter. First we have Format. This lets you choose the file type and the bit depth. So you've got a choice of MP3, WAV or BWF. I'm sure you've heard of MP3 or MP3 players, it's a common format used for audio playback. The files are heavily compressed and store just enough information for the sound to be reproduced accurately. It's a bit like JPEG is to photographs, but if you want to work on the audio in post-processing, adjusting a bit of EQ, adding some compression, then that doesn't work out quite so good, because not all of the information you need will have been stored. The benefit of MP3 is smaller file sizes and convenience if you're going to publish without editing, but if you're here looking to improve your quality, it's best to avoid it. So what's WAV and BWF? WAV, short for WAV, is the audio equivalent to RAW Photos. It's an uncompressed lossless format created by Microsoft for high quality recording and editing. If you're using an Apple device, you may have AIFF. It's just Apple's equivalent, and it's basically the same as WAV. You can use the pair of them interchangeably. I find WAV works fine on my iOS and on my MacBook, and I tend to use that one. BWF stands for Broadcast Wave Format. It's another lossless format used in professional motion picture, radio, and television production. Basically, it just records the audio in Microsoft Wave, but it has some film-related metadata attached, such as timestamps. Now, not all software is compatible with BWF, so you might just want to check if your software is compatible before recording in this format. I've tried BWF in various iOS apps and it seems to work just fine, but I don't tend to use the metadata, so I just use WAVE. So in WAVE and BWF you can choose between 16 or 24 bit. Now this is where things get a little bit more complex to explain. The short explanation is that 24 bit gives you more headroom between the noise floor and peaking. The slightly longer explanation for this is that sound is a sine wave with a height, amplitude and length, frequency. The analogue sound is a true curve, but when this is digitised it's measured in a series of snapshot samples. Bit depth refers to how many amplitude or volume samples are available to be recorded. In 16-bit there's around 65,000 measurement points, whereas in 24-bit there's about 16 million points. So 24-bit is more accurate when measuring the analogue wave. The errors are smaller. The problem with digitising sound is that even with all those 16 million odd measurement points, it still doesn't exactly match the analogue curve. So errors are produced. The measurement will be rounded up or down to the nearest measurement point. This rounding error causes some randomization in the data, which is heard as white noise, known as the noise floor. This is the hiss you get when you turn the gain up too far, and is the reason you should keep a mic as close to the source as possible. So by choosing 24-bit, you're effectively making smaller errors, so a lower noise floor and a greater distance between the noise floor and the clipping point, and this is what gives you more headroom. So how does this all help you? Well, if you have more headroom, then you can set your recording levels lower so that any sudden loud sections don't clip and distort, while still keeping away from that noise floor so that the hiss is not audible. Okay, are you ready for sample rate? Sample rate is the speed at which measurements are taken, measured in kilohertz. The DR40X has options for 96, 48 and 44.1. Some devices include higher rates like 96 and 192. So why have all these numbers been chosen? Well, they're not just random, they determine the highest pitch sound that can be converted to digital. A higher pitch sound has a shorter wavelength than a lower one. For the analogue sound to be digitised, it needs to take two measurements of each sine wave cycle, one positive, one negative. So that's two samples per cycle. Now the highest frequency that humans can hear is around 20 kHz. And as the digital converter needs two samples, the sample rate to capture a 20 kHz sound needs to be double that, 40 kHz. So if we can only hear up to 20 kHz, with a sample rate of 40 kHz, what's the point of having faster sample rates? Okay, 
So although we can't hear above 20 kHz, a microphone can, and higher pitch sounds are still going to be fed into that converter. As it's not sampling fast enough to record them, errors are created called aliasing, which should be heard as incorrect frequencies. So to avoid this, the analog to digital converter has a low pass filter, known as an anti-aliasing filter. This stops any super high frequencies arriving at the converter. But these filters aren't perfect and allow some sound through. And good filters are expensive to make. Well, at least they used to be. Now in the early days of anti-aliasing filters, manufacturers increased the sample rate to a little bit above the frequency heard by humans. So any sounds that leaked through were still above the hearing range. So as a result, 48, 96 and higher sampling rates were born. Now we're here in 2020, and anti-alias filters are much better quality than they used to be. And the quality you can get from 44.1 and 48 kHz is perfectly adequate for high quality recordings. So you would only need to go higher if you were sampling sounds containing high frequencies and planning on playing them back at a lower pitch using a synthesizer, for example. This could bring the previously inaudible aliasing into the human hearing range. In this case, you'd want to give yourself more room for manipulating the samples by choosing a higher sample rate. So you might be thinking, why not record everything at a higher sample rate? Well, size is one good reason. As sample rate doubles, so does file size. But also, sound is nearly always exported and published at either 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. For video, audio gets exported at 48 kilohertz. And when you're working with music, it's usually 44.1. So unless you have a good reason to work in a higher rate, you'll get just as good quality audio by working in one of these. It's good practice to record and work in the same sample rate so that your computer has less work to do converting it when you export. Okay, so to recap, bit depth, I'd always choose a lossless format at 24 bit to give the best possible headroom. Sample rate, for video, 48 kilohertz. For music, go with 44.1. And if you're sampling sounds for playback for a synth, go as high as you can on your device. So I hope this has helped you understand the options so that you can choose the right settings for your next project. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe to my channel so that you can join me on the next one.